Welcome to episode 136 of The Brainy Business, understanding the psychology of why people buy. Today's Behavioral Economics Foundations episode is about temptation bundling. Ready? Let's get started. You are listening to The Brainy Business Podcast, where we dig into the psychology of why people buy and help you incorporate behavioral economics into your business, making it more brain friendly. Now here's your host, Melina Palmer. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Melina Palmer, and I want to welcome you to the Brainy Business Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about a really cool trick called temptation bundling. You may have noticed this is a little bit shorter episode than we may have often on the podcast, and that is because while it is super important, it can make a huge impact on your life and business doesn't have to be all that complicated. So I'm going to give you a little bit about how it works, some ways I've done this myself in my own work and tips of how you can use it yourself, but just a few because I think you'll get it pretty quickly and be ready to jump in and start bundling yourself. You can learn more about temptation bundling, get your freebie worksheet, and any other important content that I'm going to mention on today's episode in the show notes, which you'll find in the app you're listening to or at thebrainybusiness.com slash 136. For all you listeners who are already on the Brainy Business list, your worksheet is waiting for you in your inbox already, along with the email you get from me each Friday. Not on the list yet? Simply download the freebie worksheet for this episode and you'll be automatically added. Those in the States can always text the word Brainy, B-R-A-I-N-Y, to 33777 as well. Once you send that text or download that first freebie, you get access to the super secret subscribers page with more than 50 freebies and more all the time as a thank you. All right, let's jump right in and talk about temptation bundling. One of my favorite things about this concept is, as I said, how simple it is. (laughs) This is actually something I've done naturally most of my life before I knew that there was a name for it. And actually, before there was a name for it, because the research paper and when it was coined came uh, just a few years ago, which you'll hear about in a minute. As far as the way that I used this myself, when I first started my business, I was doing freelance writing and editing work on the side while I still had my full-time job running the marketing department at the credit union. The bulk of the editing work I did was for books. In case you've never edited a book before, it means completely reading through the entire thing at varying levels of depth and focus at least three and sometimes four times before sending it back to the author to respond to. While I did enjoy the work, it's not something you're always super excited to dedicate your nights and weekends to when you've had a particularly long week or are exhausted from a new product launch. For that reason, it required some extra motivation to get through it. So I gave myself little milestone moments and rewards to keep myself motivated. I specifically remember that during one book I was editing, I had just discovered Orange is the New Black, a truly binge-worthy show, and there were days where my subconscious brain wanted nothing more than to settle in and watch nonstop. As a compromise with myself, I would instead say, I need to edit one full chapter, and then I can reward myself with an episode, and I can't watch the next one until I do the next chapter. No chapter, no Netflix. This is the essence of temptation bundling, taking something you should do, but may have a longer term reward and not be super appealing in the moment and bundle it with something you really want to do right now. The first study on this topic, which coined the term, was led by Professor Katie Milkman at Wharton. This study has one of my favorite names from an academic paper. It's called Holding the Hunger Games Hostage at the Gym. And that's essentially what the study did. Katie had personally struggled with getting to exercise as much as she wanted to and would prefer to snuggle up with a book in the downtime between classes, meeting, work, and other life obligations, something many of us can relate to. So she decided to bundle them together, making it so she could only read or listen to the audiobooks while exercising at the gym. Any other time, they were off limits. When you end on a cliffhanger, it makes you excited to come back to the gym tomorrow to find out what happens. 
And this is also what they did in their research study. Participants agreed to have their iPods locked up at the gym so they could only access them when they went to work out. And you know what? They exercised more and were happier about it. And after the study was done, many people said they would pay to continue to have their iPod locked up at the gym so they could maintain that motivation over time, even after the study was done. Is that crazy or what? It also shows something about willpower. Any of those people could have said, I'm only going to use my iPod while at the gym. But if it was kept at home, they might just succumb to the temptation and break the rules. And that's a slippery slope because once you listen the first time, it's almost impossible to not do it again. And then there's no reason to go to the gym. As this episode comes out around resolution time, and actually at this point where a lot of people have broken their resolutions already, I do think it's important to note that many participants lost their momentum over Thanksgiving break, which happened to be in the middle of the experiment window. A slight change in routine can upend newly forming habits and make them hard to start up again if you aren't careful. So it's important to keep that in mind as you set up your own temptation bundling techniques, both to help re-motivate yourself and say if you had already let one of those resolutions go, it doesn't have to be a huge milestone moment. You don't have to wait till next year to bring it back and to start working toward that goal again. And also not to get totally discouraged if you have a quick slip up like a holiday weekend, uh, but instead to really plan in advance and see that it's coming so that it's not going to lose all of your momentum and have that benefit of the temptation bundle go away. And as a quick, exciting announcement, I am so happy to share that Katie Milkman has a new book coming out May 4th and is going to be joining me on the show to talk about it soon as well. To say I'm excited to have her on the show is an understatement. She does amazing work beyond temptation bundling. You are going to be so thrilled to learn from her. So definitely keep an eye out for that episode coming in the next couple of months. Now, Here's the great thing about temptation bundling. Pretty much anything can be a candidate for the bundle. And what you set up doesn't necessarily need to be what someone else would want or need. To show the flip of the Hunger Games at the gym example, that was for someone who wanted to exercise more but got distracted by books. Listening to the audiobook was the thing that they really wanted to do in the short term that had been keeping them from taking the time or having the motivation to actually go to the gym, even though they knew they wanted to or that they should. Going to the gym was the behavior they wanted to generate, which needed to be bundled with something that brought immediate satisfaction, like an exciting story, to get them off the couch. For someone who's super into fitness already and is going to the gym regularly, they don't need that same motivation to exercise. But let's say they have a goal to read more books this year and can never quite motivate themselves to pick one up. If they switch to audiobooks and say they can only listen to audiobooks at the gym from now on, then they would use the same two items, but in an opposite way. They want to work out and are already doing it maybe to avoid that reading they know they need to do, but isn't very motivating to them in the moment. They can listen to the book or podcast now when working out to expand their mind while working on their body. The growth is similar, but opposite. And both ways are using temptation bundling to help use a now activity to achieve a longer term goal and overcome time discounting. In the case of my book editing, my show on Netflix was the thing I wanted to do now, but I only allowed myself to watch if I did my work. One important note here is that I couldn't do both at the same time, like listening to a book at the gym. My editing work would have been pretty terrible if I had attempted that. So don't feel like you need to bundle things simultaneously. Most multitasking doesn't work well. Our brains aren't really set up for that on a conscious level. And assuming that you're looking for ways to implement this for your work goals, at least some of the time, I don't want you to feel limited by needing to only use this while doing two things exactly at once, because 
it likely isn't going to turn out well. And for that reason, you don't have to have any tie between the two items. Watching the show was a personal benefit that helped me complete my work tasks. Those two things don't have anything to do with each other, except that one can motivate me to complete the other when properly framed and bundled together. To help find your candidates for temptation bundling, start by looking for something you love to do in your spare time. Say if you had a free day and could do anything, what would be at the top of your list? Or what's something you find yourself doing every day that you enjoy? That's a great place to start to find your motivator. I like using the example of scrolling through social media or even finding new things to read online. That can be useful for my business, but If you're anything like me, it's also really easy to get lost in an internet rabbit hole and lose an entire hour or day that could have been productive. Finding new articles and interesting tidbits is important for my business, but might also be a distraction keeping me from writing a podcast episode or article or lecture for a class. And I am linking to Nir Eyal's episode where he was on the show and his book Indistractable in the show notes so you can learn more about distraction if that's a problem for you. Instead of allowing myself to get sucked into the internet time warp, I can use my time timer, something I mentioned in the episode on how to organize your brain with behavioral economics, which is, of course, linked for you in the show notes. And I could say that I must write for 45 minutes. And then when the buzzer goes off, I get to spend 15 minutes scrolling through Instagram, either for inspiration or to decompress or reading interesting behavioral articles that I might want to write about or do an episode episode about in the future. Again, the two items don't have to be related. Decompressing on Instagram or if I wanted to play a game on my phone or whatever that happens to be doesn't have to have anything to do with the work that I'm needing to get done. But it's important to have that reward that is tied to the action that I need to take now to be successful and have it be something that I really wish I could be doing that my brain enjoys doing. And then I can tie those together. So while I could go on and on with another 25 examples, I'm guessing you get the point. And hopefully you're excited to jump in and start working on setting up your temptation bundling for yourself. There is, of course, a free worksheet for you in the show notes you can use to help you along in the process. And if you want a little silly inspiration, my husband just stopped in to ask how it was going and asked if I had used the example of bundling broccoli with cheese to help people eat and enjoy their vegetables. See, temptation bundling is everywhere. You just need to find the cheese to your own personal life broccoli and you'll be achieving goals left and right. Again, the worksheet and links to past episodes and Katie Milkman's article holding the Hunger Games hostage at the gym are all waiting for you in the show notes, both within the app you're listening to and at thebrainybusiness.com slash 136. And once you've found your temptation bundle, or if you get stuck and have a question, please do share with me on your favorite social media platform. You can find and follow me as The Brainy Biz on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I would love to learn more about what you're using as your motivator and what goal it will help you achieve so I can support you in your endeavors through 2021 and beyond. Again, find and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to share your temptation bundles. You'll find me there as The Brainy Biz, B-I-Z. I look forward to being connected with you on all the socials. And just like that, episode 136 on temptation bundling is done. Next week, I'll be joined by Felicity Heathcote Marks to share about the fascinating work she's done with ethnography and how you can apply those insights to improve your own business. It's going to be a lot of fun. You don't want to miss it. Until then, thanks again for listening and learning with me. And remember to be thoughtful. Thank you for listening to the Brainy Business Podcast. Melina offers virtual strategy sessions, workshops, and other services to help businesses be more brain-friendly. For more free resources, visit thebrainybusiness.com.